Well, thank you everyone for joining me this morning. What a beautiful morning. My name is John Alwyn Jones. In my 30 odd years, I know it's hard to believe 30 years, but the makeup is working, okay? I've been in travel and tourism globally for about 30 years, and no single event has changed this business as much as COVID-19 has. The impact on the world of travel and tourism has been absolutely exponential and nothing we could have predicted. If I'd have said to you, a year last Christmas, we're going to go into lockdowns, the business is going to go down the gurgle, you'd have laughed at me. And I would have laughed at you if you'd have told me that as well. But it's been devastating. And I know you guys are at the coal face, so um, it's really exciting to have a chat with you. So this is the third in a series of videos about travel managers and the impact of COVID-19 on travel and tourism, but with a particular focus on travel agencies. In the first video, I spoke with Michael Gazal, uh, Gazal, the Executive General Manager, and some of the senior management team at Travel Managers, and they were fabulous. I mean, their passion and commitment is quite amazing. And then we moved on to your seat, uh, to the, uh, now then you call them BTMs, is that Business Travel Managers, is it? Business Partnership Managers. Oh, there we go, BPMs. This company has lots of acronyms, okay? So BPMs, Business Partnership Managers, <laughs> They're the people that look after you guys, okay? So they're split into states and so on. And again, their passion and commitment was something that was amazing to, to hear and listen to. So we're going to be looking at um, how uh, COVID-19 has impacted on you, the travel managers, where you fit into the future of the travel agency business and, um, and so on. So it's a time for you to chat and reveal to everybody out there with this particularly aimed at travel managers that might want to join the business, but also because it'll be online, a lot of consumers might look at it as well. So some really great insights. So as I say, this is the third video in the series. And as I say, you are at the cold face, okay? So I'm gonna kick off now with Emma Ross, okay? And now Emma, you're a mother of four, very surprisingly, yeah, okay? and um, a very successful PTM. You've been with business uh, with travel managers for about 10 years, which is a great longevity. You've got a good client base, you're a forward planner and thinker. What's the key to travel managers for you and why have you stayed with the organization so long? I think um, it comes down to probably one word I could put for me and that's um, flexibility. Mm. Uh, flexibility for myself and running my own businesses. I came to travel majors when I was pregnant with my second baby and I was quite worried at the time about how it was I was going to be able to operate my own business whilst having a new baby yeah. um, but I then went on to have two more so it's a very successful business model mm -hmm. in being able to support um work at home parents mm -hmm. um, and it was a very successful business model for me last year as well when I know we'll all have been going through cancellations and we were working around the clock to get clients home mm -hmm. um, it meant the flexibility of being able to work the hours that I needed as I needed mm -hmm. and then flexibility moving forward as well for uh, me being able to put my business not quite in a holding pattern but mm. in a uh, quiet pattern and mm. um, I've been able to afford the time to be able to do that. Cool and in that crisis time with all the refunds and uh, we're not going to go into refunds now but it's something I'm very keen to pursue uh, going into the future I've got an interview with somebody who's become the sort of unsung champion of securing refunds from some of these operators who haven't been given refunds and I know it's been very challenging for you but is it important to have an understanding partner who knows that you've got your office at home and people are going to call you and stuff like that how's that worked for you? Yeah, having um, the business partnership managers um, to support us, mm. um, I must say that uh, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest and I had moments of knowing what do I do, I don't know what I'm doing um, and I felt like I was drowning. So just to be able to have the support behind you just to at least someone to talk to and go talk mm. you through it, uh, mm. talk you off the ledge, so to speak, um, and, and put everything in perspective. I found the support of the partner office not just my partnership manager but also mm. the management at in at mpo mm. um to be very supportive through that there, there's another acronym there mpo national partnership office. oh npo yeah. oh got it okay yeah, so travel managers focus a lot on partnership arrangements rather yeah. than 
Yeah. Yeah. So. No, absolutely. Perfect. But what about at home? Your partner at home. OK, there's your office at home. You're oh, working all the time. Oh you know, Does, <laughs> oh, my the, partner at home. Yes, that one. Um, that yeah, one. You know, yeah. He had. Yeah, no, he was really good. I mean, I I have a separate office to myself. So when it's closed off and I said, you know, I need the time. I, I work my time usually during that time last year, 5 a.m. to 6.30 or 7 a.m. I'd be on the computer in my office and I can just close the door and mm. no, everyone knows not to come Not to me. come in or they're dead, yeah. So Yeah, but even, yeah, support. Yeah. Are, you, are, you, well. are you booking domestic tourism at the moment? Um, I have, so um, a little bit personal, but I have uh, another boutique business with another mm -hmm. personal travel manager. Okay. Um, we run uh, called Bell Adventures and we run women, mm -hmm. women's groups. Um, so we did a pivot last year and with borders closing even in within Australia, mm -hmm. um, we decided to uh, run events. Mm -hmm. And so we've been successfully running mm -hmm. events for the last five mm -hmm. months or so. Yeah. And that's important because what it shows is the flexibility of being a travel manager. Um, you know, oh, that you yeah. can actually pursue other things and still keep your focus on being a travel manager. Let's go across, yeah. and thank you very much indeed for that. Let's go across to Tamara now. Now, I know, Tamara, you've been asked to step in at the very last minute on this. So why don't you tell me a bit about yourself and how come you join travel managers? I uh, Thank you. I um, I have been with Travel Managers since March 2018, I think it was. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to that, I had been actually home-based for a bricks and mortar agency for over 10 years. So I was already comfortable and familiar with working as a home-based, pretty much self-managed business entity. Mm -hmm. um, but I joined Travel Managers just so I would have uh, more responsibility more management more um i was already i was already under the model working for myself pretty much so and i'm extremely grateful that i joined travel managers uh mm. in time and was with them and established when covid hit because mm. the support network and being able to continuously sustain rapport and relationships with my clients as mm. We've had to process cancellations and refunds mm. um, and indeed being here now for them as they're looking to travel domestically as well. Um, I would not have had that security and um, support mm. had I have been on my previous role. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's. That's interesting, yeah, isn't it? Because travel managers what... has been. Yeah, because what's great is you can compare two models, can't you? And I mean, the, yeah. the fact about this webinar uh, and this recording is, that, you know, it's absolutely truth. I mean, you guys haven't been set up to say nice things in the slightest. OK, this is about, you know, you giving us your experiences because people need to make a decision about where they're going with their lives. We all make decisions all the time and sometimes we make incorrect decisions. Um, but it looks like from your experience, you made the right decision and you've really relished the support of the team at Travel Managers going through this exponential crisis, which has been incredible. So are you booking domestic tourism at the moment? I am, yeah. I've got some starting to trickle in now, enough to keep me busy on a part-time basis, you know, mm -hmm. one or two days a week. Yeah. Um, and it's really great to be back booking travel for people again, mm. you know, planning, planning trips and yeah. getting excited with them. But also like tapping into what's become a really obvious factor mm. now that we need to have our finger on the pulse as far as terms and conditions of every single yes. supplier of every single component of travel so that clients monies are safeguarded, whether yes. it's deposit, deposit monies, full payment and and also the, you know, the tricky thing of how we're being remunerated for our time and for our effort. Yeah. It's yeah. it's all changed up a little bit now, mm. but it's really great to be back on board with mm. clients as a professional. And Australia is a great place to be yeah. able to travel to and promote travel. Absolutely. With. Have and and look, from my discussions with people, one thing I've got about travel managers all the way through is this whole family feel. 
Um, you know, in a corporate world, you sometimes feel you can't call your boss because they might get a bit irritated by you or you know, they might not like what you're saying. I've got this feeling around travel managers that you can call your bosses, your your, your uh, partnership manager or whatever, and you can talk to them uh, quite openly about your concerns and so on. And it's not, a, you know, there's no vested interest on their, their part. They want you to be successful. So they want to chat with you. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Whether it's help with just managing the accounts or mm. needing personalised marketing materials or particularly tricky ticketing or things like this, mm. there's there's a whole network of teams within mm. various fields that are, are available for us and have been available for us through mm. this whole whole time and always has been and will continue to be. Yeah, and it's... Sure. Uh, yeah, just very, just, very supportive, and everyone's super friendly as well. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, just in terms of domestic tourism, are you finding? Um, I mean, you made the quite right comments about people's deposits and payments and all that sort of stuff. Um, I've heard some talk, you know, that some operators, uh, domestic operators, are not being as um, what's the word I'm looking professional as they should be sometimes, you know. So you've got to watch the terms and conditions, whether you get refunds because a border might close, a border might open. So is that taking some time for you to work that out? Uh, a little bit, although it's been progressively developing through the course of COVID mm -hmm. that some suppliers are, are easier to work with than others. Um, others, you know, some suppliers have completely taken responsibility for their continued relationships with with the traveler as well mm. and to have really stepped up to just doing the right thing good and yeah. these suppliers i think are, have got themselves in good stead for maintaining good relationships with agents mm. you know from now into the future as well yeah. um yes yeah, so, but it's it's being up front and it's having clear policies you know what is the case if the border closes yeah, and if the supplier right. is like oh maybe this maybe that the, you know, maybe there's other suppliers that have more established in writing terms and yeah. conditions on how we manage those situations, because that's what we need as agents and clients want that mm. assurance as well. And, and the bottom line is you'll book with them again and you'll recommend them to your clients. So, you know, it's a win-win for everybody. Well, let's move across now. And thank you very much indeed for that, Tamara. Let's move across now to Louise McCarthy. Um, how long have you been with travel managers? I've been with travel managers that coming up to my sixth year. My wow. um, five-year anniversary was, um, yeah, like mm. the beginning of March last year. So there oh. it was. was <laughs> okay. And uh, and it wasn't great. <laughs> yeah. So what are the key factors for you? I mean, okay, we've gone through this amazingly challenging COVID scenario. Uh, a lot has happened. Have you ever had doubts about staying in the business or have you just said, no, I'm, I'm determined to stay on? No, I've, I've not had any doubts the whole time. Um, mm. And uh, I mean, I love I love what I do, and I've worked really hard to to get mm. what I, where I have with my business. And it, you know, it's a big step when you join travel managers and you're and you're on your mm. own. It's fairly low risk financially, mm. but certainly, mm. um, you know, to go on your own, putting yourself out there and your time and the, the investment mm. and your family's time as well. Um, and there's not really anything else that I would rather do. So mm. I, I'm going to just wait it out i mean you've got adult children at home and so on so this integrates well with that because you've got i mean how, how adult they are i don't know but i mean they have things they need to do and places they need to go and all that sort of stuff okay and that integrates well with this and are your kids any good at driving business towards you they are actually so my Same. older one um <laughs> I, yeah my older ones i do send they send me their friends to help with you know the contikis and things like that Good. and my younger one i got became very involved at the school mm. um and uh did some sponsorship there and um and Excellent. a lot of my clients come from from mums from the school and families mm. that i've met through it through through my yeah. children's school yeah. So you meet with your clients. I mean, you talk to them a lot on the phone and the internet and emails, but if they want to meet with you to go through some brochures or online and learn a little bit more about a particular cruise ship, I mean, talking about international now, or even domestically about a particular resort on Kangaroo Island or so on, you're free to do that? And do you do that? Yeah, all the time. Um, we meet with I meet with them them quite regularly, and uh, even uh, during COVID, um, as I've been doing refunds and things, I've been doing a lot of walking, and I've done lots of walks with clients. So we'll good. go on a walk and have a bit of a chat and touch base, and uh, and it's been good. 
<laughs> That's a unique approach to business, isn't it? Um, we're not going to go to my office. We're going to go and walk five kilometers. And then you see, but the great point about that is if they don't want to walk any further, you've got the closing part of the sale, haven't you? Because you can either kill them at 10 kilometers or, you know, no, sign the deal now. You'll be fine. But no, that's we're wonderful. Where we can have a coffee. <laughs> nothing like a coffee well you know that's what it is okay well look thank you very much indeed and we'll we'll chip in with some more questions in a minute but peter carmichael you're the sole male here sitting there splendidly at home with a beautiful picture behind you how long have you been with uh, travel managers peter uh seven years oh wow so again you see there's some longevity there isn't there so why did you join travel managers and what were you doing before without mentioning the names of any companies but uh, were you involved in travel before Yes, I've been in travel since nearly 40 years now. So I worked in a bricks and mortar office doing retail. Yeah. They brought me in initially for corporate. Mm -hmm. um, I just sort of moved to retail because I enjoyed it more. Yeah. And the advantage of coming to travel managers was I picked travel managers because I was the, in the office, I was the cruise specialist. Ah. So I went and did cruise inspections and I would often meet other travel managers. Mm on those cruise inspections where you yeah. sit down and have lunch yeah. and chat to them. Mm. And they always seemed really happy and in, enjoyed what they were doing and where they were working. And I thought, oh, I'd keep that in mind if actually I'd, I'd never contemplated leaving the company I was with. Mm. So I never, I just knew that they always seemed happy. So when something happened at the office that made me so angry and basically it was untenable, mm. I left. Okay. Mm -hmm. but, um, well, I didn't have a plan B. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So I thought I'll go and work for travel managers. So I basically approached them, Good. did the training and started up. Uh, but I had a huge client base. So I yeah. moved across yeah. with a lot of business. Oh, well done. And I Good. struggled mm -hmm. to cope with the business when you're working for yourself with yeah. no idea how to do it. Because mm -hmm. um, you used to have people in the office who do the accounts, do lots yeah. of little things that they didn't do anymore. Mm -hmm. So it was a struggle when I joined travel managers and just because of the volume of business I brought with me. Mm. Um, and it sort of remained that way. So business, is, when you keep thinking, how can you keep doing more business mm. as one person? Yeah. And you just become a lot more efficient because I basically yeah. you know, yeah. double the income, double the turnover within six years mm. to a point where I couldn't really cope with any more business. So how, let me um, cut across you for a second there. So within travel managers, have you come up with a model, for example, so if you're getting more and more business, that you can actually pass that business on to colleagues or? No, you become more efficient in handling it. Okay, good. Mm. Which you learn as you go and you think, how can I mm. handle that much business? But you, mm. you can. Mm. You just become more efficient because initially I wasn't very good on their systems, so I struggled. But as you become better on the systems, you become more efficient and therefore can turn over more, a lot more work, Yeah, but you tend to work. So that's the best thing about travel managers, the autonomy to yeah. do what you want, how you want, with whichever supplier you want. There is a preferred suppliers, but you're not forced to use them. You can use that's whoever you point. wish. Yeah, good. Um, there's no office itchiness mm -hmm. because you work by yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I've always worked up, um, but I can say, I've been selling domestic, I was selling it last year and I'm mm. really busy selling domestic presently. Good. But that can all fall over in a second with border closures, but you just don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um, but last month I had to do a last minute presentation to a aged or a retirement home. Mm. And the supplier sort of said to me, oh, we can't do any marketing for you for us to help you because we need 10 business days. <laughs> and it was going to happen in less than 10 business days. Anyway, yeah. I contacted my marketing department yeah. and they fixed it for me within on the day I asked. Wow. Yeah. So that's the sort of level of support you get from travel managers. That's that pretty impressive. Get. Yeah. You didn't get from the company who was supposed to be supporting you. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> impressive. It was, mm. it was really impressive. And um, I was highly impressed by how mm. well travel managers supported me because I've never used marketing before in seven years. Mm. Never needed so, um, so, tell, so tell me something. So your specialty is in cruising. Obviously, I'm, I'm heavily involved in cruising as well. But your specialty is in cruising. Cruising is at a dead halt, okay, uh, except for very few operators that are small adventure ships in Australia. And then the, um, 
the uh, scenario in Ponance and so on. So how have you pivoted your business to go across into do something else? I mean, you talked about domestic business. So whilst I was a cruise specialist in my bricks and mortar office, mm. my client base was broad mm. and really cruising made up a small percentage of my business. Mm -hmm. um, I only sold high-end cruise, never sold like Piano, Princess, yeah. Royal Caribbean. Yeah. Um, and so it wasn't an important component, not to say it's not important, but it, it's not, I was spread so broadly, it didn't hurt me. I haven't promoted cruising at all mm. to anyone um, since COVID and I still haven't, I'm still not promoting yeah. it. I'm not even focusing on doing all the training they're sending out there because I'm too busy just trying to focus on what is bringing me in business, which is domestic yeah. travel. Cool. And that's what Excellent. I'm focusing on. Brilliant, Peter. Thank you very much. It's very refreshing. Um, let's go across now to uh, let's have Wendy Clayton. Hi. How are you, Wendy? Where are you? Speak louder, Wendy. Speak louder. I'm actually at um, my other job at the moment. I've had to. That's okay. To pivot, oh. I've had to pivot into a side gig just for financial and. That's yes, I'm, yeah, sitting at work number two. Good for you. So tell me about your life at Travel Managers then. I'm in my sixth year. Um, I've been in travel for about 25 years. Generally, I've done reservations, airlines, um, bricks and mortar, and that's where I was before I moved across. Mm -hmm. I moved across because I wanted to do something for me. Um, I looked at buying an agency. Really glad I didn't. Um, and I met another travel manager on a familial six or seven years ago. And um, yeah, after listening to her and going across and, and meeting up with her and having chats, decided this was probably the best one for me. I did a lot of homework and mm. um, yeah, I haven't looked back, best thing I've ever done. Excellent, good. So you've um, been dealing with refunds and so on, that took up a lot of your time. Are you generating new business now, domestic business? Yeah, or, starting yeah. to, domestically, yes. Yeah, it's starting so, you, to so you're fitting that in with your other job, which is so, so many hours a week or whatever, and then at home and so on, you're, you're actually dealing with this. What would you say, and go on. And that's okay. Yeah, and what would you say are the unique qualities of travel managers for you then? How have they helped you in recent times and how are they going to help you moving forward? Uh, they've helped in so many ways, both professionally and personally. Uh, we received a lot of um, good, uh, good support from both NPO and our BPMs through the whole COVID. Um, we did a lot of Zoom meetings just to sort of lift from morale lots of phone calls with the um, management team up in Sydney and also our BPMs down here in Victoria, just checking in, seeing how we're going, seeing if we yeah. need help with anything. Um, we've got such a good net network between ourselves as well that you can reach out through yeah. Facebook or any social media at, 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 in a second and have a response pretty quickly. Um, we can chat, we can get advice. Moving forward, um, they've been, look, the support that they've given it has been amazing through COVID and it's always amazing. Um, we're working with reduced fees, so we're not having to, mm. to fork out as much, but mm. the support they're giving is probably more than they've ever given before. It's amazing, isn't it? It's very, it's great to hear a business supporting people because all we seem to hear in the media is the doom and gloom about people being fired and made redundant and companies not supporting them and bad behaviour. Um, and the time is over for bad behaviour because in this crisis, we just simply need to work together. And thank you very much indeed for that. Let's cut across now to Emma Lucas. Emma, you've been sitting there very patiently. So how long have you been with Travel Managers? So I've been with Travel Managers for just over a year. Mm. I joined probably three weeks prior to COVID really hitting us. Wow. Okay. So you join Travel Managers. You're all excited. Gung ho. This is the best thing I've ever done in my life. I've invested my money. I'm going to build my own business. And then Kazan. How did you feel yes. when that happened? Um, it was gut-wrenching. I've been a travel agent for 16 years now and it's really been a big part of my life mm. and I did not know what I was going to do. I'd mm. be, I've gone from being extremely busy with a very large client base to basically having not one booking. Mm. And have travel managers helped you with that in terms of um, helping you, guiding you and moving the whole thing forward to see that, how you can make a living? Yes, they've been very, very supportive. I've used this time really wisely to set up uh, systems and, and do a lot of research into 
uh, how to, I didn't even know how to do a booking or mm. use any of the system. So I've mm. had time to basically ask the support team a lot of questions. And what I've found is in my 16 years of being a travel agent, I don't feel like I've ever, I've sort of more felt like a number and mm. you call someone for help and you're on hold for 35 minutes at a time and you're not really that important. But I feel mm. like when I call our support team, you might be number two or three in queue and they're more than happy to help you. Yeah. And it's sort of all about you. You're not hassling them. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? So um, I think it's great that you have the time to create the systems. Have you been able to now move into sort of using the systems, making bookings and so on? I have. So I'm very fortunate to have uh, quite a large domestic market. So mm. I've always focused a lot on domestic mm. and I'm probably making four to five bookings a day at the moment and I've had the time to learn how to do everything. So mm. I feel like uh, everything's coming along nicely now. And do you feel you've joined a family a bit like having, you know, relatives and stuff like that? And how do you guys communicate as a family? I mean, okay, you communicate with the people you report to. Um, Are you able to communicate with other travel managers as well? Yes, uh, it's, it's actually really good because we do have a specific Facebook group Mm. and just say you're working on something at 10 o'clock at night and you have a question and you think, oh, the support team's not there. It's Mm. 10 o'clock. What am I going to do? Basically, you can type a question on this Facebook forum and within, you know, 10 minutes, 10 people will will have replied. And it it is, it's so good because these are people you don't know. You, You can call them at that time and everybody is really willing to help. And what you're telling me is you're all insomniacs and you don't go to bed very early and stuff like that. And you stay up all night and your husband says, what were you doing all night, darling? Or your partner says, you know, look, it sounds fabulous to me, I've got to say. And, um, you know, I was asked to come and chat to you guys and I had no vested sort of interest or anything like that. I, you know, I've never worked in, uh, in a travel agency, but I know a lot of the bricks and mortar travel agency groups and so on. And your chairman, Barry Mayo, has talked a lot about um, travel managers to me and also the chat with Michael Gazal. So it seems to me that um, a home-based agency, if you think about going forward, how things are going to work going forward, the travel agency community with the high investments in bricks and mortars and so on, it's it's not a good business model. So it seems to me that this model of working from home is a very positive one going forward. Do you all agree with that? Yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah. And, and the other thing that impresses me is the ease with which you can talk to your uh, managers and advisors and stuff like that. And there doesn't seem to be a canyon between the two. I mean, I've worked for large corporate organizations and, you know, being remotely overseas from a head office. And you feel like you're being a pain, really, when you bother somebody, you know, and the time distances, particularly working internationally, was uh, pretty interesting. So you're all ha- happily committed. Sorry, go on. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, I think the difference is it's not a boss-employee relationship. So we're in partnership with with travel managers. So it's our business and their business. So we're working together. So anything that you're talking about is to benefit both businesses. It's not, it's not, Mm. you know, we're not, you're not looking for someone to to tell you what to do pretty much. Mm. Mm. Well, I think that's a lovely, uh, I don't like the word segue, but I think it's a lovely segue to draw to a close on this discussion. So look, thank you very much indeed for all your time today. I love speaking to you as a family. It's been absolutely fantastic. I look forward to chatting to you again. And look, by all means, you know, spread this video out when it comes online through Travel Managers and Global Travel Media to all your friends and even your relatives and your husbands and boyfriends and partners and all that sort of stuff. They will love seeing you. So congratulations, guys, for being so dynamic and so interesting in such challenging times. And I look forward to speaking with you again. Take care now. Thank you.